This video details the Hoosick Tunnel in Wilmington, a narrow gauge railroad built by the four enterprising Newton brothers of Greenfield, Mass. The HT and W, hoot toot and whistle as it became known, ran from its southerly connection to the Boston and Maine at Hoosick Tunnel to its northern terminus at Wilmington, Vermont, a distance of some 25 miles or so. The HT and W connected rural northern Mass and southern Vermont residents to the rest of the world. The Hoosick Tunnel in Wilmington was narrow gauge until 1913. In 1904, the HT&W was sold by its original builders, the Newton Brothers, to a Mr. John Kellis, and also a silent partner, Mr. William Rockefeller, brother of John D. Now, Mr. John Kellis was a shrewd businessman. He was not a railroad man or a logger woodsman. He was not very well liked or respected by those he did business with or those who were in, him, in his employ. The right-of-way of the HT&W was widened in 1911-1912 in anticipation of it becoming standard gauge for its connection at the Boston and Maine at Hoosick Tunnel to make unloading and loading of freight much easier. In 1913, this standardization was completed. All but two of the narrow gauge cars were sold to the ORNW, Ohio River and Western. Those two cars were passenger coach number six and a caboose. Only history can tell why the ORNW chose not to buy those two cars. Those two cars, by the way, sat on a siding up in Wilmington, Vermont, well into the 1920s, basically just rotting. Originally, the rail line was basically a logging railroad, but then it began hauling passengers for extra income. It ran north originally to Reedsboro, Vermont. Then in 1891, it was expanded from Reedsboro to Wilmington, Vermont, thus being the HT&W, Wilmington. The HT&W hauled every piece of equipment and machinery to the New England Power Company as they electrified the region through dams, building of reservoirs on the Deerfield River. Ironically, once the power company was done, they washed their hands of the old HT&W. Done with construction, the HT&W was put to rest in the early 1970s. What it helped build led to its demise. Enough of this. Let's get on to the video, shall we? I hope you enjoy. Well, hey guys, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on where you are. We've returned to the scene of the crime. Right up yonder is the east portal of the Hoosick Tunnel. And we're here today. It's a, it's a nice crisp, crisp, there Sam, crisp April day. It's about 33 degrees out. And we are about to cross the trestle. Going eastbound. To get to the station site of the former Fitchburg Railroad, Boston and Maine Railroad, uh, Pan Am, maybe a few others, um, now CSX, up here in Florida Mass. We are going in search of today the station site of the former station of the Hoosick Tunnel and Wilmington Railroad, a little narrow gauge railroad that was built on the east side of the Greenfield River, Deerfield River, sorry. Right down yonder is the remains of the powerhouse that we featured in our other video on the Hoosick Tunnel. We're just about across on the east side of the trestle. Last time we were here, there was probably a foot of snow. And that's an old electrified station uh, signal tower. Yeah, so we made it back over. East portal over there. And we're going to go in, sight, in search of the station site. So let's go. Okay, we made it over to the east side of the trestle. And what we're doing is we're kind of, again, hypothesizing, guessing um, where the station was. Now, 
we came across this foundation of something. This was probably not the station. However, this would have been a front door going up in there. Um, hey Terry, you guys see all the debris up in this foundation hole? There's a set of stairs going down right there. Now the key is over in here if we find any evidence of a line going off that way and continuing north then this quite possibly could have been a small station time will tell we're going to keep moving on okay remains of the foundation is right there these portals there main line maintenance of way building we just found right here you can see ties in the ground veering off could this be and it goes right smack in front of that building could this be the starting point of the old ht and w the hoot toot and whistle now here's a couple of longer ones right here they could have been switch ties because it does look like it appears like there was this one which may have been the main line and another one right there i hope you can see it the ht and w um remained in business in service until 1971 for you kids that's a long time ago for us old timers it's not so let's um let's get back on what for now i will call the main line and let's see if it goes off in that distance in that direction terry's already up there somewhere let's let's go find him okay foundations right up there the bed is right here and we've come across this debris field and I am of the opinion right now that this is the remains of the side of a gondola or a boxcar this is a uh, dumping pit here there's cable there's pins there's ties there's truss rods there's this anybody know what that could be is that a brake a brake rod and part of the brake mechanism that would have been attached to the shoe i don't know but this is some pretty cool debris here we're excited and we're getting more excited as we go all right terry's yelling something to me that he's got definitive proof so just like old Forrest Gump said, life's a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get. You don't ever know what you're going to find when you're out in the woods looking for railroad stuff. This is definitely the side of a boxcar. And all these parts and pieces are just strewn all about here. Um, we are back on the bed. Now, here it is right here. It goes right on back and through to the station site what we're calling the station for now all right well we've got a little ways up farther we've got a beautiful stone abutment or end wall of a foundation there we've got concrete we've got brick we've got more debris uh, ties rail plates this is over the edge of a bank here and we just noticed right here is another foundation so i'm thinking as terry originally said that first foundation that we found was not the station that was probably more or less of an electrical switch box uh maintenance of way utility building 
And I'm sure we're going to get some comments from Hoot Toot and Whistle folks. Hoosick Tunnel in Wilmington. Uh, correcting me, agreeing with me. But, look at this nice piece of wall here. Um, this could have been the back side. This could have been the upper wall of whatever this building was right here. Terry's down there investigating. Let me go down and join him and see what we can find. Beautiful, beautiful stone end wall right here. And in the center, we've got this concrete wall that comes over and droops down and droops back up again. That piece is leaning over. Uh, almost looks like the cradle for a big tank of some sort. Um, diesel tank, gasoline tank, water tank. Um, <sighs> yeah, and then over here is the north wall. Again, this is period correct to the um, late 1800s, early turn of the century, 1900s. So, question was, what was this building? This was not the or a station. This was a utilitarian um, maintenance of way, uh, something to do with the infrastructure. This was not a station. Um, Here's a pile of brick over there. Let's see if we can get some names off of those. All right, update. If you can see my hand here, there was one more cradle right here. This is the middle one that we showed you already. And then over here was a third. So whatever these tanks were, there were three of them. Here on this bank building. And that's a sharp, sharp, sharp drop off down there. Rivers down there. Powerhouse is over there. Main line is way up top there. Any guesses? Any definitive yeses? Shoot us a couple of words on the uh, on the comment section. Tell us what this was. All right. So what we've got here is we've got this beautifully, very decorative old stone. Period. Correct. Late 1800s, and it ties in. Where's my finger? There it is. Down there, two over there, two over there. This was a rectangular building. It does set right on the bed. Here's the bed. Let me try to get a really good shot of that. Um, this is the Hoosick Tunnel and Wilmington bed right here. These ties, tiny, tiny little rail uh, tie plates, spike plates. But from from the edge of the tie of the bed to the building is only about two feet. So, could this have been the station? And this upper part at track level was the passenger depot. And then down below where those tank stanchions are was some sort of maybe water storage that was pumped up from the river. Um, we're gonna continue on. It's snowing out now here in April. We knew we'd we knew we'd have some cold weather up here, but it's snowing out in April here in Mass. All right, spinning you around, getting you dizzy. Here's the bed right here. What we are looking for is definitive proof of where the spike plates are down and still fastened on both sides of any given tie. I brought my tape measure. And we want to measure to see if this was indeed narrow gauge or if it had been upgraded to standard standard gauge all right stuff is just starting just starting to pop all right let's get a good spot to walk and we're gonna walk there's all kinds of debris down in the woods down there pails 
buckets, pails, more pails, more buckets. Um, yep, let's go. Terry's already way up there. Let's go catch him. Okay, there's one still spiked in. Spiked. I went center line, come across the tie, over to this end, still spiked in, four foot eight and a half, center center, standard gauge. So, must have been upgraded. Uh, now I understand the Newton brothers built this to Reedsboro and it terminated there and then a few years later in order to increase their profitability they uh, extended it up to Wilmington oh no <laughs> we've got we've got a caged man <laughs> you <wanna> make some money? <laughs> he's on the wrong side of the yeah. tracks hey are we excuse me did we cross over onto the wrong side of the tracks here i swear i got money i'll give you if you get me out <laughs> what do we got here warning Nothing. changing water levels huh sounds like my nighttime trips to the bathroom oh oh never mind that this one railroad tie railroad tie railroad ties railroad ties railroad ties railroad ties railroad ties river <gasps> oh no creosote in nature Oh no! Well, before I start narrating and talking and walking, I just must say one more time how beautiful of an area this is. The river, big steep drop off, rail bed going back to where we were. The main line CSX is out there. Um, oh, let's go up this way. Beautiful, beautiful rock ledges that they cut and chipped and drilled through. And the bed runs right along the river. And there's more railroad ties down there. Shame, shame, shame. All right, anything interesting pops up like a big black bear diving off the hill, uh, eating me and Terry, I'll get the camera out and show you. <laughs> okay. Okay, as promised, I told you I'd get you back out. Uh, we have not been consumed by a big black bear yet, but we do have uh, an iron culvert that runs across to here and we do have some ties boom 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 and we've got a second washout where I'm assuming another culvert was um, the baffling part of this to me is I don't see any signs or remnants of stone culverts from um, the original days now these iron culverts, especially that corrugated one, that's modern day-ish. Or did I speak too soon? Could those three right there be the upper part and the lower part is already way down there? I'm going to say that's a possibility. Let's keep going. Smoky Bear. Grateful Dead Bear, Yogi Bear, Winnie the Pooh, he's a bear. <laughs> I don't see him yet, but if I could build a little log cabin and live here with my little black lab puppy and live in uh, peacefulness, this would be the spot. Yep, so we're in search of, there's a plate, plate, they just toss them and again um 1971 ish i believe um, was the last time the hoot toot and whistle saw any action um here's a pretty good washout mother nature doing her thing coming down i know you can't tell sitting there in your comfy chairs but that's that's a seven eight nine hundred foot drop from there down hard hard harsh drop and it goes right down I did see something that looked like iron yep right there there's a piece of rail right there 
Hey, Terry, I got rail. So. Right there. Not quite able to pull it out yet. But there's rail. There's also some coal. A lot of slag. Uh, oh, I got the remnants of a stone culvert. Keep that, that's going back. Uh, let's see if I can do this without getting hurt or killed. Oh yeah. Come on, check it out, Terry. Can you see that yet, guys? Uh, I know how all those YouTube guys say, oh, I'm trying to do this with one hand. And now I know what it's like. Uh, uh, all right. Look at that. There you go. Iron tube. Now that is period correct. That's iron. That's thick iron. Quarter inch. And some beautiful, beautiful stonework there. I do want to kind of peek in there. Uh, I don't know where he... Where would Yogi come in from the other side? And, and be hiding in there. I think yes. he's already awake. I think washout probably filled that in. Just probably washout. Yep. It's completely black. Yeah. What do you make of this? What is that? Iron piece there. That's actually what I saw. Let's see if we can't get over there. Uh. Huh. Well, it is thick iron. It's got tin work on it. It almost looks um, like a commercial industrial gutter or screen part of a screen plant now right there are some big two two and a half inch thick um by it looks like eight looks like two by eight and they're tongue, tongue and groove tongue and groove oh you got flooring. a piece there too yeah it's flooring yeah that's flooring for something so this could have been the superstructure support beam and all these pieces here here and here and it looks like quite a bit more down there could have been a small little trackside shanty right here at, at some point. Do you concur, Mr. Terry? Uh, He's thinking. I don't know, I don't know he doesn't know. Neither do we. All right. I need two hands to get out of here, so. There she is. A piece of rail from the Hoosick Tunnel in Wilmington. Right there. Nice little five foot piece we dug out of the bank over there. And I'm not, I'm not quite sure of the actual title of that. Let's see if I can do this. <laughs> it's a nose guard, a hockey mask. Oh boy, look at this beautiful retaining wall here. The hands of man built that. I'm going to take a stab at the fact that it might have been 1874 spring. The peepers were just starting to peep and old Tom Willard said, let's go boys, we got a retaining wall to build. Oh, we got standing water here all of a sudden. We got a nice little rock. Put my brand new boot. I got brand new boots, guys. <sighs> Oh man, look at that wall. It starts, it runs, and it ends. And it's tapered, tapered down on both sides. So even in the mundane act of a bunch of good old boys coming out here in the middle of the woods building a stone wall, they still put their little artistic flair into it. That, ladies and gentlemen, is what impresses me the most. And we got a debris field here of railroad ties. They're all down through there. They just ripped and tore, ripped and tore. Signs of beauty and nature out here amongst the ruins. Fiddlehead ferns. 
Yep, spring is just popping up here. Would you looky looky? Beautiful stone work right here. And it almost looks like they diverted the creek to come this way, the river, into a small, possibly a water wheel here. Terry, what do you think? We're just getting down upon it. We were way, way up there. That's the rail bed. And we had to come down this steep, treacherous mountainside, fighting off bobcats, mountain lions, and alligators, just for you guys. Let's see what this is. Oh boy, beautiful. Wow. Oh boy. That is nothing but muck, running water. I'm gonna turn you off, I need two hands. Okay, we got rods and bolts down both sides. Right here and right here on this corner. Uh, Terry's got a smile from ear to ear. He's over there telling me, quick, get over here. He's got something. All right, just came around that corner. I want you guys to see this. Look at this. And look at that. Boom, 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 boom. Oh, sorry, Terry. This is just amazing. And what's more amazing is of these nuts <laughs> they, they are in a complete perfectly proportioned line can you see that right there right there right there all the way out all the way out to the river and they're still here they're still here they still go all the way out and they go out into the river can you see them out there let's try to oh there's a beaver dam <laughs> fresh couple of fresh chews right there see the beaver dam over here <laughs> you ever been chased by one of them i have they can get mighty testy this time of year there it is right there but those bolts go out there and they go right out here too this was stone concrete wow look at what I'm seeing I didn't see that before let's get a close-up shot of that all right you got your thinking caps on oh almost fell what was this look at that Wow, that's got to be, <laughs> look at that tree growing right there down and amongst it. I got to get this. Sometimes train stuff is what we're here for, but sometimes we just got to get this other stuff. Ah, you guys got to see this. <laughs> so that's a black birch right there. Very common invasive species. In fact, a white birch right next to it. And it's taken up root all the way down. These are the roots down into the ground right here. I would say from where I'm standing here at the base, all the way up has got to be 22 to 25 feet. And the tree grows up from there. How much longer can this tree sustain living there well that one didn't last very long these grooves must have been big oak or chestnut beams anchored into them and what are these sluice ways we almost got to get up top and try to find out what's going on up top uh, this is just incredible okay that right there is the impressive stonework we saw on this the east side the side we're walking up all of these channels, the one over there by the beaver dam, there's one here. These bolts and rods go all the way out into the river, right out into the river. And I'm not gonna go any farther. This water is just gorgeous. Um, and right about there, you can start seeing 
the start of the sluice way that goes in between that side and that side. That right there is where we were sitting and perched upon and I almost fell um, a few months back when we did the uh, Hoosick Tunnel video. That's the west side over there. Right up top is where we found that old sink in the ground and some other stuff. So that's where we are. So this was directly connected to the dam that was dammed up across the river here. And I'm not exactly sure how they, how they would stop or slow or increase or restrict the water, but this is where the dam was. And that's the sluice way that leads down to the powerhouse. We figured it out, me and him. We've got a retaining wall here, just filled with rubble, loosely laid, just to retain the rail bed, which is right up there. Um, came upon this here, there's the ground rod, there's the pole right there that they cut down. It was number 75, you can see the numbers on it there. Um, so we're all of a sudden walking through muck and mud and spewage what is this what is that huh. ah what do we got here hey boss forget what they're called uh, little mini time capsules that people put at various places like an old plastic jug with a bunch of junk in it huh. yeah. looks like it's got some writing in there I'm just going to we've got a cow and a dinosaur and a smiley face and a marble let's put it back that's where it was right there time capsules here at Lost Rail Beds. Telegraph poles. Or in this case, probably telephone poles. Wire all strewn about. We're almost back up to the bed. I don't know where my partner went. Oh. There's old number 74. There's the base of it right there. There he is. We're back on the bed. We've pretty much exhausted our walk here because this bed just continues on north uh, to the point where it hits, eventually hits the realignment spot up by the reservoir. And uh, we've already walked up a mile plus. So we're going to go back this way, go back down to Sam the Silver Car, um, pick up a few things along the way that we are going to shoot for you, and get back in Sam and continue north. Our goal is to hit Wilmington today. So we will have done the southern terminus up into the northern terminus of the hoot, no, the hoot toot and whistle that's it the hoot toot and whistle H T and W. okay this is conclusion of part one of the hoosick tunnel in wilmington as promised i drew a map now this was drawn by me i know rand mcnally is probably shaking in their boots right now at the quality but it gives an example of where the East Portal is, where the Main Line is, former Boston and Main, currently CSX, and I've even color-coded it. If you notice, the blue is the water. That's the Deerfield River. The green and red Christmas colors, well, that's the Hoosick Tunnel in Wilmington. And you can see where they had a turning Y, so they would drive down forward from north to south, go on the Y, back down into the station and continue northward going forward yeah 
So there's the switch house that we found the remnants of and the trestle we walked over, the east portal, the river, the HTNW, and the site of the Hoosick Tunnel Station. Hope you enjoyed. Look forward to doing number two for you, part two. We're going to travel north up into Reedsboro and Wilmington. Okay, thanks for watching. Lost Railheads. Catch you on the next one.